Class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing Game 42 of the regular season between the San Jose Sharks and the Montreal Canadiens, in which the Sharks have won 3-2. to two. <laughs> I didn't think I'd have to bust out the party favors again this season after the disastrous start to the year with 11 straight losses, and yet the Sharks somehow managed to top that with this 12-game regulation losing streak that finally came to an end here tonight against the Montreal Canadiens. The Sharks have had pretty historic success against this team. The last time they lost to the Canadiens in Montreal was all the way back in 2015. So this was really as good a chance as ever to break out of the losing streak. And while it ended up being quite close at the end, the Sharks do get it. And it is a regulation win at that. And this was a pretty well-played game by the San Jose Sharks. The first period started off relatively even. There were some chances either way. The Canadians felt as though they were pretty decent to start, though the Sharks did score the first goal of the game coming from Luke Cunning off of a pretty bad Montreal turnover. Then they just have missed coverage, which allows Zetterland to make it 2-0 San Jose. The immediate next shift, the Can Canadians do cut the lead in half with a goal for themselves from Gallagher. And it is a 2-1 lead for San Jose heading into the second period. And while that middle frame was, or that uh, starting frame was relatively even, it is the second period where the Sharks actually take control of this one. They are the significantly better team in this middle 20 minutes. They get the only goal of the period, which is coming from Ahotiak, his first goal as a San Jose Sharks. And it is a 3-1 lead for San Jose heading into the third. And again, in the early parts of the third, while the Sharks are not nearly as dominant as they were in the second, they're not really giving the Canadians a ton to work with either. That is, of course, until the Canadians decide to go for a very aggressive and early goaltending pull with over five minutes remaining in the third period. And they would get one goal back to cut the lead to one with one from Mike Matheson. But some pretty heroic blocks and as well some pretty heroic saves from Mackenzie Blackwood would allow the Sharks to get this victory break out of this slump and get some feel good uh, sort of feelings back into that Sharks dressing room. And so moving on to the players to talk about, we had some relatively solid, uh, solidly sized shakeups into the forward lineups. The top six had remained relatively consistent over these past few games with maybe like one swap out, but we have finally seen the separation of the duo of Hurdle and Eklund who are, were on the top line for the San Jose Sharks for a while. Instead on the top line, we have Hurdle being joined by Zetterland as well as Philip Zadina. And this was an effective first line for the San Jose Sharks. Obviously, they, obviously they score a goal in this one coming from uh, Fabian Zetterland on a nice hurdle pass, but just generally had some solid shifts. And you would expect, for instance, Zadina to really be the odd man out here. And obviously his ice time was significantly less than either Hurdle and Zetterland, who were playing in much more tense situations. For instance, at the end of the game in the six on five uh, point when they were trying to defend that lead. But Zadina actually worked rather well on this line. He was a relatively effective forward, not outstanding, but pretty solid in this role. Again, as I've mentioned in the past, when it comes to Zadina, he's not really a long-term solution on the top line. But honestly, with the approaching return, seemingly, of Logan Couture to the lineup within the next couple of games, it could very well happen. He doesn't really have to fill in into a spot like this for particularly long. Long, as I suspect once Couture does return, somebody of these top three centers, Couture, Hurdle, and Granlund, is going to end up playing on the wing, bumping Zadina back into that bottom three. When it comes to the other two players on this top line, Hurdle was quite solid, uh, slowed down a bit as the game went on and had some awkward coverage on the Gallagher goal right after the uh, Zetterland goal. But I would still say a pretty positive game for Hurdle and Zetterland also looking quite solid. When it comes to the second line, we have Granlund, Eklund, and Duclair. Now, starting off with Eklund, of course, the big news from him in the previous game was him getting benched by David Quinn for a few shifts at the beginning of the second period. I wasn't particularly happy with that, considering most, if not all, of the Sharks players were playing quite poorly in that particular game. And so a lot of eyes were on him as he gets dropped from the first to the second line, still maintains a top six spot, clearly still getting a good amount of ice time with over 18 minutes here tonight. And I thought Eklund had an extremely up and down game. There were a few shifts where he was not great on, I would say for sure. He was at times getting a bit out muscled. There was this one play where he has the puck along the boards and then 
It is a Montreal defenseman, I think, Caden Gooley, who comes in and just pushes him off the puck, turns it over for the Canadians, and they rush it up the ice. So that was a bit of an awkward one. Lost a couple of battles, but on the other side of things, a very nice pass to eventually set up this Ohatia goal. Made some solid moves in the offensive zone. Had a great wraparound chance. Showed off some decent speed. And generally, I would say... Probably about like a 6 on 10 type of performance for Eklund. If it was David Quinn looking for like a rebound from the previous night, I would say he did hit that bar. When it comes to the other two line mates here, Granland I thought was really all over the puck here tonight. There were at times where he tried to do a bit too much and kind of ended up getting a little too fancy with it and caused a couple of giveaways for himself. But he was otherwise really solid. A great pass on the Ohatia goal to allow him to get in behind the defense for the eventual game winner for the San Jose Sharks. And so a solid game for Granlund. Duclair, I also thought was pretty decent, not super like all over the place in terms of actually being effective. Definitely the third man on this line in a way, the weakest link, I guess you could say. But I thought defensively, he actually had some pretty decent coverage, not too, too bad offensively either though not as noticeable as his two line mates and it's kind of been the mo for duclair this entire season he was decent enough i guess when it comes to the third line obviously the big sort of headliner news is that uh Cunnin scored which is something that is pretty rare to see just generally coming from the third line I and mean, in particular luke Cunnin. it is off a pretty bad giveaway by the canadians who just panned this one right to Cunnin, who is of course right in front of the net as he usually is uh Otherwise, though, it's important to note that just because you score a goal doesn't mean that you had a good game. Outside of the goal that Cunnan puts up, he doesn't really do anything in this game. Basically, every single other shift past this point was not all that great. That's not to say he was completely invisible. For instance, he had a pretty decent late in the game shift in the third period as the Sharks were trying to recover from having given up that 3-2 goal from Mike Matheson. But realistically, still not all that great a game. And the same would go for his linemate Barabanov, who also was not particularly effective here tonight for the San Jose Sharks. The only player who stood out in a better way, I would say, was Justin Bailey, more so from a defensive perspective. Bailey didn't exactly generate a ton of chances, though hard to blame him with the very little help he necessarily gets from his linemates. But from a defensive standpoint, he had a great back check that prevented a very solid chance for the Montreal Canadiens. He, I believe he drew a penalty at some point as well. Uh, he was just playing a really solid kind of bottom six type of game that I'm sure David Quinn looks at and is very happy with. And so I'd say pretty decent for Bailey for sure. When it comes to the fourth line, uh, actually a relatively interesting game from the fourth line. Uh, LeBanc was probably the player here who stood out the most. He has been really invisible and just doing nothing for each of the past few games. And he's been sort of in and out of the lineup because of that. Uh, but here tonight, while not exactly lighting it up in terms of chances and uh, goals and assists and points and what have you he was you know effective he was on the ice he was in the offensive zone he's getting those shots on goal even if they're not deadly and dangerous shots they are still shots they're pushing the pace forward which is what you want from your fourth line and so again like I said with Bailey David Quinn will look at that from a fourth liner and say that's pretty good when it comes to Mike Hoffman he was extremely hit or miss as well uh, here tonight I mentioned in my review my uh, quarter season reviews that Hoffman is one of the more hit or miss players on the entire Sharks team thus far this season that did not change here tonight it all was encompassed in just a singular game there were some shifts where Hoffman was really making some slick plays and some solid passes and in other ones he just looked entirely disinterested in making anything happen and so it's kind of hard to really evaluate where Hoffman lands on the game I guess in the end it's pretty right down the middle as okay and then when it comes to Carpenter he was really the odd man out for sure on this fourth line didn't really notice Carpenter at all in this game and so not really much else to say when it comes to defensively the Sharks had a shakeup on their top pairing as Ferraro was joined by Mark Edward Vlasic here due to an injury to uh, Emerson which was sustained in the last game and obviously anyone who looks at this top pairing is immediately worried because Vlasic has not had a single good game thus far this season if I'm not mistaken in fact he has had very 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 few good games in each of the past like four seasons 
for the San Jose Sharks. And so to him to get a top pairing situation here is definitely rather nerve wracking. Now, of course, they're going up against the Montreal Canadiens, not nearly as skilled a team as uh, like, let's say the Toronto Maple Leafs, the team the Sharks faced off in each of their two previous games. So he's not having to face off against Matthews and Marner and Nylander, but the Canadians still have some decent firepower with players like Caulfield and Nick Suzuki. And so it was still going to be a pretty tough night for Vlasic. And honestly, in front of his home crowd here, as he was from Quebec, he played a rather solid game and almost certainly his best performance of the season and even was rewarded by David Quinn for that with over 20 minutes of ice time, which is by far a season high for him. And so while Ferraro heavily outplayed him as his defensive partner up at 27 minutes, Vlasic was very, very good here tonight, at least by his own standards. When it comes to Ferraro, also a pretty heroic game for him. He was a big part, as I mentioned early on in those last few minutes when the Canadians had the goaltender pulled in the six on five situation. They needed a lot of very important blocked shots. A lot of those came from Ferraro. A couple of them also from players like Zetterlind up high, but Ferraro was a big part of it, asserting himself in front of the net. And that is indeed why David Quinn loves Mario Ferraro. And while many other coaches and GMs around the league are looking to try and acquire him, he's not exactly the best X's and O's type of player defensively, but he puts it all out on the line. That has been mentioned multiple times in the past because he's been doing it for years at this point and it continues here tonight. When it comes to the second defensive pairing, we have Thrun and Ruda. Thrun continues to be sort of like the number two guy for the San Jose Sharks defensively. Uh, while Vlasic did get a couple of those six on five types of shifts, Ruda, or uh, not Ruda, but Thrun was also relied on along with Ferraro in those last couple of minutes too. And it's because David Quinn has been gaining this confidence when it comes to Thrun. His game was not picture perfect here tonight. Definitely don't get me wrong there, but I thought he did some decent things in the defensive zone. Not really all apparent in the offensive zone, which was a slight disappointment because it really feels as though he was picking that up as of late, but still not too, too bad. And when it comes to his defensive partner, Ruda, I will point out his very nice assist not technically an assist, but a sort of assist on the first goal for the San Jose Sharks from Luke Cunning. A really nice dump into the zone, just a little backhand into the corner to create some sort of uh, some confusion there for the Montreal Canadiens, and generally a decent defensive game for him as well. When it comes to the third pairing of Ahochuk and Addison, obviously, like with Vlasic on the top pairing, I was pretty worried about this third pairing because Addison. Obviously, with my quarter season review, I'm not a big fan of him. Ohachuk, I haven't been the biggest fan of either thus far this season. So putting them together, you would think it's a deadly combination for the Sharks. And yet, they actually performed rather well. Not only did Ohachuk get his first goal for the San Jose Sharks, but even Addison looked much more serviceable defensively and even contributed somewhat offensively, not in terms of points, but in terms of chances. So a solid game from the third pairing, I would say. And then finally, we have Mackenzie Blackwood at the end of the day it was going to be a Sharks goaltender who would really be the linchpin in getting the Sharks their first victory in over a month's time and breaking them out of this losing streak Blackwood was a huge huge part of that didn't really have much of a chance on the Gallagher one technically could have made the save on the Matheson one but there's some decent traffic in front but a few other miraculous saves in those last few minutes some key saves as well in the first like 50 or so minutes of the game when the Sharks were the better team and so he was a big part of this Sharks victory but that will do it for this review the Sharks will be back in action on Saturday where they will take on the Ottawa Senators, a team that is right there at the bottom of the standings with San Jose. So if there was a chance to try and get some sort of win streak started for themselves, that would probably be the best opportunity. Class dismissed.